brought me through. I'm not up here just singing. I mean it with every fiber of my being. And I want you guys to say it like you mean it too. What a mighty God. We're, we're going to sing that part again. What a mighty God.
the body of Christ, so worship the Father together. Take your worship, no. Nothing shall take the place of God, no, no. For you alone and you alone, my hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, when we run out of words to say, all we have to say is hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You know, and I was being reminded how the Lord showed John in Revelation, and it says that all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell down on their faces before the throne. And worship God saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be our God forever and ever. Amen. And Father, Father, I just pray that we always remember, Father God, that when we are in front of the throne, Father God, that we're able to show that reverence, Father, that we're able to see that we're in front of the Creator, Father God. Lord, I just pray that the posture of our heart is in such a way that we acknowledge you, that we acknowledge that all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the power, all the strength that we have comes from you. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you and we Praise you in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, New Day. Good morning. My name is Arlene Valdivia, and I'm one of the ministers here at New Day. And I'm just so honored to be able to serve under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Tony Dunn. And of course, our beautiful First Lady, Miss Jackie Dunn. And now for those of you that are joining us online, I just want to welcome you. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to let you know that if you need to connect with us, if you need prayer or if you want to learn more as to what's going on with New Day, just go ahead and text us at New Day Connect at 94000. Okay? If you have any questions, just go ahead and text us. Now here, do we have anyone visiting us for the very first time? If you don't mind just raising your hand, we just want to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our ushers are giving you a first time visitor's card if you kindly will just fill it out. We actually do have a, a little gift for you. And at the end of service, you will be dismissed first just to show your gratitude for you joining us today, this morning. Now, New Day, you know how we do it here. If we can all just stand. Just greet one another. You don't have to hug, but you're definitely welcome to. And God bless you. Are you guys ready for the word? 
Amen, me too. By your heads, let's pray. Gracious God in heaven, we come before you this day, thankful for this day, a day that you've made, a day that we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. I thank you, Lord. It is alive. It's a living thing, according to Hebrews 4.12. It will not return into your void, according to Isaiah 55. And Father, I thank you today that everyone here and online and those even will watch later will have ears to hear what your spirit is saying and then the courage to move from where they are to where you would have them to be. In Jesus' name, let all who agree say, amen, amen, amen. amen. So New Day Online and you guys that are visiting online, just thank you for tuning in. We really love and appreciate you all also. Um, One of the most fascinating stories in the Bible to me is uh, the great prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah, great man of God, great man of faith. And uh, when he, um, he prayed, you know, and the heavens uh, stopped, prayed, the heavens rained, and rain fell down, and God was just amazing. But there was this one particular instance where um, there was a great battle between Elijah and uh, all the other prophets of Baal. They were formerly prophets of God, but, you know, Israel had gotten away from worshiping God. And this great um, uh, battle, if you would, and the Baal prophets were praying all day, cutting themselves and everything, praying for the rain and water to come down, and, and um, it didn't happen. And then, I'm sorry, fire to come down. And then um, Elijah got up and he prayed and fire came down and consumed the offering that was there. So this is an amazing story. But my point about this is this, is that Jezebel, the queen, said, I'm going to kill you. And Elijah ran. He ran. And Dr. Parker, when we were in Israel with you, uh, from Carmel to... Um, Oh, Lord, where did he run to? Beersheba? From Dan to Beersheba. So he ran a long way. There was a lot of running he did. But he found himself in some caves. And then God met him there and asked him twice, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah said, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. He was so depressed. He was so depressed. And, you know, at one point, I take my life. How do you go from, how do you go from all this faith in God seeing fire come down and burn everything up. And then you're like, I quit. I can't do this anymore. And, and he was so messed up because Obadiah, uh, another good guy, had said um, Elijah was, thought he was the only one. And Obadiah said, you know, I've hidden other people who haven't, you know, who are righteous. And uh, a couple of other prophets. And all of a sudden, Elijah kept thought, thought he was the only one. And I see us as Christians, a lot of times we think we're the only one. You think you're the only one anointed. You think you're the only one. You, some of y'all think y'all the ones holding this church together. <laughs> you think if you leave here, it's just going to come apart. And to our visitors, you know, may, maybe you feel like we're about your church. You have been your home church. <laughs> How does it happen? You know, Peter, you know, um, uh, first, you know, he catches this boatload of fish. Wow. And he bows and says, get away from me. You know, Jesus, I can't. You know, I'm, I'm a sinful man. I can't. I can't. Okay. So we see some humility. Or do we? Later on, he walks on water. Wow. You know, uh, the Lord gives them anointing to cast out demons and heal the sick. And they go out and they come back bragging about how, you know, the demons are subject uh, to them in Jesus' name. And Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on a mountain and transfigures before them. They see Moses and Elijah. Peter saw this. And later on, when it was time for Jesus to go to the cross, he's like, I'll be right there with you. I don't know about these other cats. No, no, but see, I got your back. I'm your boy. That's the Tony Dunn translation. And, um, and Jesus said, you know, I've already prayed for you that your faith fail not. You're going to deny me. I'll never deny you. And he did, just a little while later. Three times. How do you go from seeing into the supernatural Seeing Christ manifest, transform, till now you, 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 you deny him. These are the things that concern me about us. I, I can't do church as normal. And forgive me for not getting excited about miracles, signs, and wonders. I've been to Africa 26 times. And if you want to see a place where the Holy Spirit moves, come there. In fact, it's known south of the equator is really where, where church growth is happening right now. Europe is dead. America, well, we see what's happening here. We're on our way. We're on our way. But are you going to stay the course? And see, one of the things that we, we're not good at is self-awareness. Because see, all of us want to be judged by our intentions. 
not by results. So we hurt somebody, harm somebody. Oh, well, you, you, God knows my heart. Yeah, yeah, and it's deceitful and wicked. And it's amazing to me how Christians don't like correction. Why is it you can speak in tongues and then talk about me behind my back? Even more so, why do you look me in the eye and lie to me? And I'm cool with it to a degree. And I'm not the guy to take retribution, get revenge and all that. I'm not, I'm not into that. But I will intercede and I will pray. But often for me, it's just an indication of your spiritual maturity. And where we mess up is that we think because someone moves in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, you lay, you lay hands on somebody and they drop. I've, I've had I, people that genuinely, some people, I, wait, I've been in lines where I've been pushed. Amen. And sometimes I get in resistance. So I'll be in, a, I'll be in one of the Holy Ghost lines, they'd be like, I ain't going down. And I remember one particular time, a missionary from, from Mexico was at our church at, uh, at Zoe. And he, you know, we was a line of us, and Bishop Ed wanted us to be prayed for. And, um, and uh, it was a whole line of us. And he was probably about seven, eight, before he got to me, I dropped. Next thing I know, I was getting up off the floor. There's a real anointing. Yeah, there. But my point is this, is that we, I've seen people experience that. And then slip back. And I think most of you know my heart about that because it's not the first time I've spoken it. In fact, I'm kind of repeating it quite a bit. But my intention is that as we grow numerically, that we will grow in spiritual maturity. Okay, five of y'all agree. Okay. So today's message titled is Salvation from Mental Strongholds. Salvation from Mental Strongholds. So let's recap from last week, okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole, what's that next word? Spirit. I'm going to need you to talk to me today, okay? Your whole what? Spirit. And, Soul. and, Mind. be kept blameless until the coming, until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Next slide, please. Also, too, from last week, we, we've learned, and some of you already know this, and we are tripart beings. We're made of three parts. There's the spirit, okay? That is the real you, the eternal you, okay? Then there's the soul. Soul in Greek is suke, but I'm using psyche, so you better understand that. And then body. So we don't have a spirit. We are spirits, and our spirits, uh, we have a soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions, and we are housed in a body, Okay? I was in a body. And most of us, we pay more attention to our bodies than we do our spirit or our souls, but that's not the message today. Okay. Recap also from last week. Next slide. 3 John 1, 2, and this was our text from last week. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in help, even as thy soul, which is the word psyche, your mind, your will, your emotions. Got it? Now, Soul and spirit are sometimes used interchangeably, and that's kind of that's incorrect. And, and I understand what people mean, but I, I want you to understand the soulish realm is what we're talking about now. Well, the spirit is listed first, and it is important, and we're going to get the spirit. But, but I've learned we've had so much teaching on the spirit, and really, in my humble opinion, not enough on the soul. That's why a spirit-filled person can still act a fool. That's why somebody can get up here, preach their hearts out, and lean over and tell the pastor, man, you got some good-looking ladies here. I want to meet some of them. Yeah. While y'all out there shouting amen and running around and doing backflips, he's up here. So, let's jump into this soulless realm. Next slide. What you think on, you become. What you think on, you become. Now, when service is over, I have the handouts out there. You can, if you, the notes are there, if you want to pick it up and take one, feel free, because I'm going to get in some stuff you probably never heard of today. But that's okay. We, in fact, we just surface stuff. It's much deeper, much deeper that we can go, and we will go in the coming weeks. But James, who is James? What's the first book written in the New Testament? James. What's the first book written in the New Testament? James. Okay. James, and James was Jesus' half Got it. Okay. Okay. Verse 119. He says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen. Slow to what? Speak. And slow to get 
angry. <laughs> we don't listen. Trust me, it, how long did it take me to learn to listen to you? About 15, 16 years? No joke. I, she'd be talking, I'm just waiting for her to jump in. Because see, I got an answer. And I'm going to help correct her. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. Verse 20, human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. That's right. Human anger. Now, the way I'm wired, I got one major emotion. Guess what it is? Did somebody say fear? Anger. <laughs> human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. It doesn't. It doesn't. Now, there's righteous indignation, a type of anger that will move us from unrighteousness to righteousness. But usually human anger is like when things are not going my way or I can't be in control or I feel used. And oh, and the number one, don't play me. Don't take advantage of me. Don't try to use me. Don't, don't. And I sit in a particular seat where most of y'all that come here, you really say you're for the Lord, but you for your opportunity. So I have to take thoughts captive constantly. And proof of it is this, is that when I don't let you do your ministry, and then you tell me your season is up. Next slide, please. 21. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Wait a minute. Who is James talking to? Unsaved people? Talking to the church. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. Wait, I thought they were saved. I thought when I got baptized, I was made right with the Lord. Mm. And humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. So that means I could be in resistance to the... Uh, for it has the power to save your soul. Which is your mind, your will, your emotions. It's the word of God. 22, but don't just listen to God's word. You must... Do what it says, otherwise you're only fooling yourselves. So most of us are not doers of the word. We hear it and we can recite it, but it hasn't taken root enough in us to bring about transformation or mind renewal. Next slide, please. So what you think on, you become. Now, it's, it has the power, it, the word of God, to save your soul. So what does save mean? The Greek word save means to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. We're talking about my psyche. It needs to be rescued. My spirit gets saved when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Titus 3.15 tells me that. Ephesians tells me that. I, I'm, it's sealed, okay? My spirit, cool, spirit. I die, my spirit goes on to be with the Lord. James tells us that the body without the spirit is? Okay, I need everybody to stand for a second. Just stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. And online, when I have them stand up, I got four or five people going to sleep. And this ain't a message I'm going to let you sleep on. Not today. Not today. Not today. Okay, y'all awake? Everybody good? All right, have a seat. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I just, I, I, I want him to get it, okay? I really do. And it's funny, there is something called the spirit of slumber. Yes, it is. That bad boy slide right on in here. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that if you were watching your favorite show, you'd be alert right now, or let your team be playing. All right, all right. Next slide. Let's jump into this. Your soul is not your brain. Your soul, your mind, your will, your emotion, is not your brain. Like I did last week, I bought you a model I keep on my desk just to remind me about my mental well-being. Now, question, are memories, kind of rhetorical here, are memories, emotions, or personalities tangible? Can you hold them? Can you touch them? Can you play with them? But are they real? Yes. So your belief system, where does it reside? In your heart. <laughs> so we're going to use heart, soul, mind interchangeably today, okay? All right. So we're going to look at this brain, all right? But now my, I have a question for you. Next slide. Next slide. Where does my soul, what does my soul need salvation from? Now, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. Now, here we go. Here we go. Listen to me. The church in Corinth, Paul acknowledged, did not come behind in any of the spiritual gifts. 
they were all that. They, they were speaking in tongues, prophesying, they, all that was happening. The tongues and interpretation, uh, give, all of that was going on. But it also said there was so much division. Yes. Division. In fact, uh, I got a meeting later on this evening with the Delta Force, and one of the scriptures I'm going to give you is 1 Corinthians 1.10. Let there be no divisions in the church. No divisions. In fact, one of the things as a leader, if you got a problem, you take it to me. You don't take it down. You don't be talking to if, 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 if one of the ministers is coming, I mean, one of the members is coming to you with an issue, bless you. You, 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 don't, you don't, you encourage them. I had one member come and tell me, uh, uh, no, come in, 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 in a nice, no, whatever. Okay, 2 Corinthians 10. No, because I'm looking for maturity. I'm, I'm not mad at anybody. Trust me, guys, all is well. Right, Jackie? Please. Right. Okay, good. All right, next, go. <laughs> and then what Tajalea prayed today about this word and let it be precise and what's needed is exactly what me and Jackie were praying this morning. Tajalea was spot on. Okay, now Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, his second letter. Watch this. It says, verse four, for the weapons of our warfare. Now we're talking about what spiritual warfare. You see this? And a lot of times we think we think spiritual warfare is God out of shake out of the muscle. Look, God out of shake out of the muscle. Well, when you're speaking in tongues, you're speaking unto God. Oh, I can't wait to get into the spirit part. Okay, be a few weeks. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy what? Strongholds. We don't talk about strongholds. Yeah. All right, five, we destroy arguments. Let me ask you something. Can I hold an argument? Can I touch an argument? Can I feel an argument? Can I throw an argument? Can I kick an argument? No. And every lofty opinion. Can I hold an opinion? Can I touch an opinion? But you see how powerful these things are, right? Raise against the knowledge of God and take every, how many thoughts? Every thought. So every thought I have, I have that comes into my soul, I have to bring it unto the obedience of Christ. Every. 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 He's talking to saved people. They've been saved for a long time. This is actually the fourth letter, just we only have two of them. They've been corresponding for a minute. And he told them, you guys are still on milk. One is like, I, I follow Apollos. The other is, I, I follow uh, Peter. I follow Paul. It's like, no, that's childlike. That's childlike. He also says, be careful how you... No, um, that's, that's weeks. I'm, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Next slide. Next slide. Let's break this down. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. This word is used once in the New Testament, and it means this, a castle, a fortress, wait, or anything on which one relies. What do you rely on? My intellect. And most of you rely on, here, here, here it is, you protect your fears. Yes. What you're afraid of, you protect. Wake up. A castle. You've kind of seen castles, especially those that sit on top of a hill. Jack and I, for our 40th, uh, we're going to Germany. And there's this castle that's been in Disney movies and I guess all kind of movies, you know, I don't know, up uh, been in movies. And she wants to go see it, so we're gonna go see it. And it's, it's, it's big, it's beautiful, it sits on a hill. And I'm like, how did they build that? And after that, we're going to the Autobahn and I'm gonna drive something real fast, okay. <laughs> that's what we're doing, all right. That's, that's next year, okay. But, but it says to destroy the castle, to destroy the, those things that have been fortified in our minds that we've come to believe over time, that actually work against the word of God and the call of God in your life. That's why 40% of people who start seminary in five years, they're no longer in ministry. Next slide, please. Verse five, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every what? And thoughts is a mental perception. Your perception. Your perception. Now, how do you perceive? What influences your perception? Holler. What influences your perception? Social media. Social media? <laughs> family. family? The fa your family of origin, especially. What next? Experiences. Experiences. What was it over here? Values. Was that prophetess back there? 
Oh, Q, okay, Q, I brought this behind you. I thought it was her voice. Okay. Um, so Q, you said values. Where do you get your values from? Church. So why do we have so many different denominations? Oh, yeah. Different values. I value wholeness in the soul. That's Tony. Okay, that, that's it. Emotional wholeness. That's what it's all about. So, next slide, please. Let's get into this. We are born with at least 100 billion neurons. Oh, my God, it's a science class. I knew he was going to do that. He get that doctorate. Now he think he's a science teacher. <laughs> Not at all. This is pre-doctorate right here. We have these neurons. Now, second bullet point, dendrites are the neuron cells' bodies. Dendrites are extensions. There's a word missing on yours. Dendrites are extensions. Say extensions. extensions. From the neuron cells' body, important for neural communication. Now, Next slide, so you get this. It's a neuron. And on your right, all those things shooting out for the, the neuron, I don't know if you guys can see this online, but this part right here, that's the neuron, okay? It's the, the bulk of it. And it's a cell in there. And you guys got 100, over 100 billion of these bad boys. Now, um, on those things that's standing from those, uh, that neuron is called dendrites. Now here, this is what's significant. This is what's significant. Dendrites receive electrical signals, signals from neighboring neurons and transmitting them towards the cell body. Now, that's what I need you to understand. When a thought comes into your mind, all of these dendrites begin, imagine I'm holding a little tree right here, a little small miniature tree, and I'm shaking it. And what happens when a thought comes into your mind, okay, the dendrites begin to vibrate because they want to pull it there. That's why certain things get your attention and certain things don't. That's why I would tell you, pay attention to what gets your attention because what gets your attention gets you. And you need to know. And so they're pulling these signals in. You guys got that? This is what literally is transpiring. That's why you can hear certain songs and it makes you feel a certain way. It comes in. Next slide, please. Dendrites play a role in information processing. How you process information. But well, that ain't spiritual. Yes, it is. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word mind is now. So Greek words, it means process. They play a role in information processing, enabling neurons to interpret. So how you interpret it? How you interpret so uh, I had lunch with a guy, and I love him, and he's probably going to watch this. This is hilarious. And uh, he reached out to me and said, I, I really need to meet with you. I'm like, okay. And so I, I looked at my calendar, and I, I literally, as my daddy would say, I squoozed him in. <laughs> and I was late getting there because he was in between. I, I just didn't get there, and he said, and I said, hey, what's going on? I literally sat down and said, hey, what's going on? I didn't do any of the pre, you know, what do you call it, small talk, and like, what's up? And uh, he said, he laughed and he says, well, let's pray first. He held out his hands and we held hands and we prayed. And, he, and then he said, you know, when I pray for you, I, I, I get this sense that, you know, you, you just maybe just you're overdoing it. Don't overdo it. You know, slow down. And I, I said, well, what do you mean? Be specific. You, know, you just, just, you know, slow down. And because, you, you know, I know you, you, you've called and you're, you're doing all, you're all over and all that. And you just maybe just not do so much. I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, well, you called me here. If you really was concerned about me overdoing it, then you should have left me alone. <laughs> That was the first thing. And he told me what was going on. Then he said, hey, I got him involved in this, and I got this going on, and this is something I think I'd like to introduce to your church. And I'm like, there you go again, adding to my plate. Now, I'm not saying nothing, but I'm wondering why is it that you're not conscious, you just told me I'm doing too much, and then you're giving me more to do. Then as I was leaving, he said, he said, here, talk with you, Dr. Parker. I've spoken with you. And, and Dr. Parker said, you got an appointment with Bishop. It's so hard to get a hold of him and get time with him. And then he said, you know, if you can, I need you to spend some more time with Dr. Parker. You just told me. <laughs> <laughs> but as that is coming in, I could have gotten offended. I could have gotten bothered. Enabling neurons to interpret various stimuli, influencing cognition, how you think, and your behavior. 
So how I receive this information is going to determine how I behave towards it. Let's keep going. Dendrites grow. Say grow. grow. Okay, now here it is. Dend Everybody awake still? Y'all still awake? Yeah. Okay, get, catch this. Nobody on Facebook and Instagram, right? Yeah. Dendrites grow when we repeatedly, say repeatedly. repeatedly. Listen, write, talk about, or practice something. So even your self-talk. Yes. What are you telling yourself? You actually talk a whole lot. I forgot what it is, how many words per minute. Self-talk is it's like four times as much as we can verbally talk. What are you telling yourself? And then, this is what we do too. So however you feel about yourself, you're going to insert yourself in environments to validate that. So it's more reinforcement. This is how a stronghold is developed. They grow. And the more they grow, the more they grow, the greater that stronghold is. Next slide. According to research, the more we practice, the more we repeat something, the thicker the dendrites grow. So what do you think happens to the, to the dendrites that we're not repeating, that we're not growing, the things that we don't visit, the things that we don't rehearse? What happens to them? But the things that we're repeating and repeating and spending more time, I love it. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If, if you... Oh, I, I've used this before, and, and this is true. So, mm, okay. So, we all have preferences. And we want everybody else to prefer what we prefer. And we think what we prefer is, is all of that. And we base everything on what we prefer. Our style, our preference. Next, next, next uh, slide, please. And when the dendrites keep growing, they begin to connect one to another. Look at the base down there. Look at the base of that. Look at it on your left. You see that? Okay, next slide, please. With practice, the dendrites build a double connection. The faster, stronger, and dual connections of dendrites last for a longer time. <sighs> Brits, can you guys stand, please? Because you guys got the upcoming marriage uh, 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 Nick, uh, in a couple of... Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, give me a hand, please. Yeah. And we have an amazing marriage ministry at, here at New Day. We got the Lawsons. We got the Winstons. We got the Bristol. They, they, they tag team, okay? So I know you guys up next. And so you guys that are married, make sure you avail yourselves to the up, upcoming uh, event. Now, if you can just yell out to me, uh, when is your wedding anniversary? When were you married? September 1st. September 1st. What year? 1990, September 1st, 1990. How was the weather at your wedding? Sunny. Sunny. He remembers. Sunny. And that was what day? September 1st. September 1st, it was sunny. What was the weather like September 18th? Why don't you know? <laughs> September 18th is more recent than September 1st. But see, when we have a major event and you wrap some emotion and feeling around it, it makes an indelible impression. That's what trauma happens. That's what happens with trauma. That's not the message today about trauma, but that's what happens. Get a Brits hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Thus, dendrites grow when we are actively practicing or doing something repeatedly. So you said September 1st, right? Okay, so every September 1st, they probably celebrate. We go to dinner. We go to the beach. We, whatever. We're going to do things. Me and Jackie, I'm going to Germany. <laughs> I've already picked out the car I'm going to drive. So we rehearse it, and we rehearse it, and so it sticks. Sticks. You guys remember when your children were born. Major events. You remember that. Or, and then here's the negative side. Some of you, listen to me, because we got young people in here. Some of you did something illicit. Females, I'm talking to you. And because the guy shows some interest in you, in you it's stuck in your mind. And you, you got a stronghold behind him now. That's why it's always a different guy, but the same dude. Oh, that'll have lost his hey. Next slide. Which one is a stronghold and which one isn't? Which one do you meditate on? Ruminate. I can't even, and they, they, they ain't got nobody. I don't know, what are you doing? What's it, 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 when you're doing that, you at work. 
He don't know what he's doing. He ain't no supervisor. How do you get the job anyway? That's why your wife don't like. Which one's the stronghold? What about the fear? I got one for you. When I send you a text, you're like, oh, what does Bishop want? What are you afraid of? I'm only 5'7". <laughs> what, what am I going to do? Which one is not the stronghold? I ain't worried about it. Which of those dendrite clusters show that you are anxious, fearful? Next one. Give an example. Worker number one. I did this last uh, second service last Sunday. So you're at work, and, and somebody comes up to you and says, I like your shirt. And you say, so you don't like the one I had on yesterday? <laughs> so I like your shirt. Thought comes in, but that I'm not worthy. I need people to validate me. Them dendrites get to vibrate, and they're so big and so strong and so magnetic, they yank what was a compliment, and somehow or another, you turn it into something negative. You ever meet people you just can't say nothing nice to? They're always self-defeating. Oh, it ain't Next slide, please. Next slide. Next one. Next one. Oh, thank you. They're hiring a new manager at the job. They're hiring a new manager. They ain't going to choose me. But yet, this is a year of increase and new day. And we say jobs and better jobs, benefits and, but they ain't going to choose me. You will cancel out and God wants to bless. Or you get the job, get the job. I don't deserve this. Or they're going to find me out. What is imposter syndrome? That's rooted in a stronghold. You feel they're going to find you out, or you just people going to? No. Mm -mm. Next slide, please. <sighs> Salvation for mental strongholds. Philippians, that's how we solve this. Paul writing to the church in Philippi, and he says, Don't worry about what? Anything, Anything means what? Instead, pray about what? Everything, Everything means what? Everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Now, I want you to think about the mental process on this because I'm giving it all to God. If I'm giving it to God, I don't have it anymore. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. If, I, if, if I'm thanking him, Miriam, early when you were ministering a song, you say, you just said, and the scripture says, look at his handiwork. You guys are saying, look at the stars and the moon. And, and when we do that, it's a reminder of how great God is. So if I'm constantly reminding myself how great God is, what is the stronghold that's being developed in me? So when crazy stuff happens, I, somehow or another, inter it, uh, I, I, I interpret it through that somehow or another, there's some good in this, and I'm, some good is going to come out of this. Now, come November, when the vote happens, it's going to be crazy in this country. But Tony Dunn is going to sleep peacefully because I've already decided. <laughs> already decided. Verse 7, then you will experience God's peace. When do you experience God's peace? When you got a thankful mindset, a thankful heart. And I find stuff to be grateful for. This morning, I was thanking God for the plants outside in my backyard. I'm, I'm going to find the good. My mother said something to me the other day when she first in, moved in. Uh, well, that was, wasn't the other day. That was a while back. But she said this. She said, Tony, you always say, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I have trained myself because when I grew up, if I saw you coming towards me, I was like this. As soon as I'm, don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Because I'm wired this way, and my experience made me develop a stronghold. Ain't nobody going to punk me. I was tired of what my daddy was doing to me, and I was tired of the big dudes in the street. I had had enough. So I had to switch that because I could not get up here and preach from that perspective. 
as so many of us standing in this pulpit, their hearts haven't been healed. I ain't saying they haven't been called, but their hearts haven't been healed. That's why every little thing irritates them, bothers them. Go online right now and look up some of these pastors and how they're yelling at the congregation, how they're mad at everybody. Catch them behind the scenes and see how they're behaving. Tell me that minds need, they don't still need to be renewed. And the thing about the Word of God, most of them is just for information and ain't brought about no transformation. Seven, then you will experience God's peace. Had a lady tell me, I don't even stand up. Somebody told me once they were mad, hot, and bothered, chest all heaving. I'm at peace. <laughs> Just walked away from me. <laughs> if that's peace, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. <sighs> Philippians uh, verse 8. And now, say now, yeah. dear brothers and sisters. Now, I love this. Listen, everybody, one final thing. One final thing. Fix your thoughts. And where are the thoughts? In our soul. Fix them. Fix them. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he will keep you in peace. Fix your thoughts on what is. See, see, all this stuff I experienced, it was a lie. Because, see, I interpreted it, and I, I made it, I made it, I, 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 and then it became my truth. It's my truth. It ain't the truth. It ain't the truth. Ain't nothing but your opinion. Your perspective, your perception is not the truth. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable. If it ain't honorable, back up. And right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are... So what, 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 are, you, what are your practice of thinking? What are you thinking on? Things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Nine. Now, remember we said about practicing what happens with your dendrites when you practice? They grow, they grow, they grow. So whatever you think about, you're going to become. Because see, our, our, life, we gravitate, our lives gravitate towards our dominant thoughts. And I can tell what you're thinking because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. You think you got peace. No, you, you have a preference. If I can have this, drive this, live with him, marry him, because he got green eyes and long hair. Let's, let me get ahead. Action, action steps. Action steps. One, understand that holding onto ungodly strongholds is detrimental. It's detrimental. Detrimental. And, I, and I, I know pastors who are in their members, will lead, people will lead a church and they can't get out of bed for two days. I've seen it. I'm like, and, and a friend of mine who I love dearly, he, I remember him, we was a group of us talking and he was correcting somebody and he says, you, got, you know what the mistake is? You think the sheep are yours. So then what is in you where you need people to, you can't lead people if you need people. And I watch, you know, people trying to get, gather people to themselves. Why, why are you doing, what is that about? What emptiness is in you? What is that stronghold that says you need other people and their presence to validate you? No. No. Understand that, that scriptural meditation is truly beneficial. Meditate on the scriptures. Minister Malik, you said something to me one time, and I, I really appreciate it coming from a man like you. You said, you know, Bishop Tony, or Pastor Tony, then, you, gotta, you, you see things in the scriptures. You know what I do all day? Connect the dots. Connect the dots. While y'all watching sitcoms, I'm somewhere connecting the dots. While y'all watching Power and Empire, I'm somewhere connecting the dots. I ain't got time for that ignorant foolishness. And I've never seen Empire, never seen Power, don't know when they come on, I just saw an ad. But I know I ain't watching that. I'm mindful of what I subject myself to. I'm mindful of my ear gate and my eye gate. I'm mindful of what I hear and I watch. Next one, next one. Have, have faith that your thought patterns can change. Well, it's just the way I am. 
Well, you've been born again. Second bullet point, find out what God's word says about your situation and then meditate on it. Put that word on it. Put that word on whatever that situation is. Whatever it is, put that word on it. Last slide. Your homework is to read Acts 8, 1 through 24. Your homework is to read this week, Acts 8, Acts 8, 1 through 24. And I'm, you're going to see right there for yourself, somebody that gets saved, gets baptized, and gets discipled and still has a heart issue. Still right there. Still there. I want you to meditate on that. Because my expectation, my desire is for us to grow and mature. I cannot, and I will not do church as normal. I will not. I will not. I will not. We got some normal ministries. I mean, normal, I mean regular ministries. Got the, prep, the prison ministry about to start. And I appreciate Sister Shirley and what she's doing with that. And it, it's just all, we got some great stuff happening. The Brits are speaking next, next Saturday. Okay, yeah. And then Parker, uh, this coming uh, uh, Wednesday night and the following Wednesday night. Got some great stuff coming up. Kids, mania, all that's wonderful. So those are generally ministries you have within the church. But I tell you what, I want some maturity. I'm looking for some fruit and I'm looking for that fruit to remain. I'm looking for you to grow. I'm looking for you to mature. I'm looking for you to stop getting your feelings so hurt. Stop getting bothered. Father, stop getting easily agitated. Stop getting just because you can't get your way. I got a 20-month-old 20 20 grandson. I understand him. I can't understand you and you 45. Now, I will do this. I will be patient, and I will allow my patience to turn into long-suffering. Because I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. But I need to be clear on expectations here. I expect harmony within this body. Unity within this body. I expect everybody to follow the vision. And if you're not, then go. If you got another vision, that's fine. Because two visions, you have division. So if, it, if it's not for you, then that's fine. You got on the bus, you can get off the bus. Yeah. There are 400,000 churches in the United States of America. Tony Dunn ain't like a shining star rock star. I got my little niche, and I'm staying in my lane. And I respect others that stay in their lane. And if you don't believe you belong in this lane, there are plenty of other lanes to go around. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads, please. And that was a word of encouragement, believe it or not. <laughs> Online, I love you. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it will not return into your void. It shall accomplish that which you please. And I thank you that today your word was sown on good ground. And Father, we will think about what we think about. And Father, I thank you that those strongholds, dear Lord God, that are not of you, that we will not think about to release that. It will shrivel up and die in the name of Jesus. And Father, in this place will become your word and your word will have preeminence in us. So Lord, when we speak <laughs> out of the abundance of the heart, it will, your word will come forth, Heavenly Father. Jesus said his words are spirit and they are life. And I thank you, Heavenly Father. The life we need is in your word and we understand that. And we allow, we allow it, we allow it. And we practice your word. We meditate on your word day and night, Heavenly Father, so that we will do all that it tells us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Now, this is the part in the service where you can participate through your giving. Here at New Day, we have three ways to give. First, you can text us. Text New Day Corona to 77977 and follow the instructions in your text message. Or you can visit us online. Visit newdaycorona.org and click the giving tab. Lastly, you can mail your gift to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California, 92882. Here at New Day, we also have an offering confession. Let's declare it together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, 
favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing and we will care for the widows and orphans in Jesus name. Amen.